No, Joseph has already given the lecture. Uh, I don't know <laughs> what I am exactly doing here, but anyway, I try to repeat. Uh, yes, my uh, Richard Elman lectures uh, are entitled Confessions uh, of a Young Novelist. And one could ask why, since I am marching toward my 77th year, uh, I could say so. But it happens that I published my first novel, The Name of the Rose, in 1980, which I, means that I started my career as a novelist no more than 20 year, 28 years ago. Thus, I consider myself a very young and certainly promising novelist who has uh, published until now only five novels and many, many more will publish in the next 50 years. This work in progress uh, is still unaccomplished, otherwise it wouldn't be in progress, uh, but I hope to have collected uh, enough experiences to deliver a short talk about uh, the way I write. According to the spirit of the Elman lectures, I shall obviously speak of my writings as a novelist, not, not as an essayist, even though I consider my academic activity as the primary one, and as a novelist I am only an amateur, or a university professor who has found a nice way to spend his weekends, and to make sometimes these weekends to last seven days, which is not so bad. As a matter of fact, I began to write the novels during my childhood, but I began by writing the title, usually inspired to the adventure books of that time, the Pirates of the Caribbean, or the Phantom Ship, and immediately after I made all the illustrations. Then I commenced the, the first chapter, but since I tried to imitate the real books, and I wrote in block, after a few pages, I, I, fell, I felt exhausted, and I stopped. So, each of my works was an unfinished masterpiece, like Schubert's. At uh, 16, I obviously started to write uh, poems, uh, like everybody else. I, I, I do not remember whether it was the need for poetry and the contemporary discovery of Chopin that caused the flowering of my first platonic and unconfessed love, or vice versa. The mixture was a disaster, as it happens to everybody. But uh, once I have written, even though under the form of a paradox uttered by one of my fictional characters, that there are two kinds of poets. The good ones uh, who burn their poems, poems at the age of 18, and the bad ones who keep writing poetry for the rest of their life. Until the age of uh, 58, I didn't feel uh, frustrated, as it happens to many scholars, by the fact that I didn't perform a so called creative writing. I felt uh, totally fulfilled being a philosopher and a semiotician. As a matter of fact, I now realize that I was satisfying my passion for narrative in three different ways. First of all, by a constant performance of oral narrativity, telling stories to my children, so that I felt paralyzed when they grew up and shifted from fairy tales to rock music. Secondly, by playing with literary parodies and pastiche. by making a narrative out of every, every, every critical essay. When I presented my doctoral dissertation on the aesthetics of Thomas Aquinas, one of my examiners charged me with a sort of narrative fallacy. He said that a major scholar, when beginning a research, certainly proceeds by trial and error, making and rejecting different hypotheses, but at the end of the inquiry, all those attempts should have been digested and only the conclusions should be presented. On the contrary, I told, so to speak, the story of my research, as it were, a detection. I realized that there was somebody else who did the same. It was Plato 
with this dialogue of Parmenides with nine hypotheses, each of them contradicts the previous one, and you never arrive to discover who is the guilty one. Uh, but uh, I, I realized that my, my examiner was right in making this kind of analysis of my procedure, but that my procedure was a good one. The objection was made in a friendly way. The same professor later published my thesis, such as it was, in a philosophical series he was editing. And I was, and I wasn't disturbed by that remark because I repeat, I was strongly convinced that every research must be narrated in this way, and every scientific book must be a sort of whodunit or the report of a quest for some holy grail. And I think I have done, done so in all my uh, subsequent uh, academic uh, works. At the beginning of 78, a friend of mine, working for a small publisher, told me that she was asking no novelists, like philosophers, theologists, politicians, and so on, to write a short detection for the reasons I have just told, I reacted by saying that I was not interested in creative writing, that I was convinced to be absolutely unable to write good dialogues, and I don't, don't know why, I concluded provocatively by saying that if I had to write a criminal novel, it would have been at least 500 pages long, taking place in a medieval monastery. My, my friend said she was not fishing for miscarried guests and, and our meeting stopped there. As soon as I returned home, I brought in the door and I retrieved the note. So I had written the names for the series of books. It means that the most secret part of my soul, of my place, the idea of a novel was already grown up. I didn't know. At that moment, I realized that I would have been, it would have been, been, been nice because while he was reading in this different room, and that was all that he started to write the name of the world. Later, I have repeatedly been asked why I decided to write a novel, and all the answers I gave, one different from the old way of were probably all true, which means that they were all false. Only one. At the end, I realized that the only correct answer was that at a certain moment of my life, I felt the wish to do that. Okay, I think that is a sufficient and reasonable explanation. When interviews ask me, uh, how do you write your novels, I usually cut them short and reply from left to right. I, I understand that as an answer this is not satisfactory, first of all, because it produced some astonishment in Arab countries and in Israel. Uh, to, today I have time for a more articulated reply. Uh, by writing my first novel, uh, my first novel, uh, I learned some things. First, Inspiration is a bad word that tricky others use in order to look artistically respectful. As a famous quotation says, genius is 10% inspiration and 90% perspiration. It is told that the French poet Lamartine spoke many times of the circumstances in which he wrote one of his best poems, and he said that it happened by a sudden illumination during a night when he was wandering in the woods and so on and so forth, and after his death, somebody found in his doors an impressive quantity of versions of that poem, written and rewritten in the course of years. Speaking of uh, slow inspiration, the name of the rose took me only two years for the simple reason that I had not to make any research 